so this is a, a new exam paper. It's from Pearson LXL. It's the sample material for their extended maths certificates. They have a paper one and a paper two. Paper one is non-calc. And I think that's going to be first exam examined in June of 2025, if I'm not mistaken. AQA do a similar kind of level two further maths course. And we'll see uh, we'll see what the differences are between between this and that as we do it. Question one then, well, how functions work, right? Is a function of x is this doing times in x by four and then adding six. We're just going to do that to minus three, right? Just put in minus three, four times minus three plus six. And we calculate that. This is non-calculator, so you do have to be a bit more careful with what you're doing. But on the whole, I don't think it should be too tricky. Um, find an equation for the line perpendicular to this. So uh, the gradient is what matters here, right? The gradient is four. So perpendicular is going to be minus a quarter. Um, so we can maybe just write down that our um, line is y equals minus a quarter x plus c. And then we get given this point, right? So we know the x, this is an x y coordinate. So we know the x is zero when the y is minus eight. So if we replace y is minus eight, a bit like replacing up here and replace the x with zero. And then we just calculate this, of course, zero times anything is zero. So we just get c is minus eight, which means we can just write out the full equation with a minus eight and for that one there. And it says point A um, has coordinates this, B with this, and they're both on this line here. So what we can do is, again, using this x, y idea, well, we can just say x is A when y is 10 and solve for A, um, take away 6 divided by 4. And then likewise over here, um, x is uh, 3, y is B, uh, and that's easier to solve, right, because you just calculate it. And so our coordinates are the points 1, 10 and 3, 18. And we'll put those down in a graph. Maybe just draw a picture. It doesn't have to be in any way accurate. Notice that I'm not doing any of the uh, numbers here. I'm just saying 1, 10 is somewhere in here and 3, 18 is further to the right and further up. So somewhere over there. And now it says find the distance between these two points. This is A and this is B. So find the length between them. Well, just how far does it go across and how far does it go up, right? Because if we knew how far it goes across, which we do, it's 2, right, from 1 to 3. And how far it goes up, which is 8. We can just do Pythagoras to work out the distance from one point to the other. 2 squared plus 8 squared square rooted. Um, okay, well, that's going to be 68, right? And then 68 is 4 times 17. So it's root 4, root 17. And we'll do a bit more of this in the next question. But root 4 is 2, so this is just 2 root 17. And uh, and that'll be part 1 done. Like I said, we're doing more of it here, right? Because root 18 is, is, is 9 times 2, right? But that's root 9, root 2. Root 9 is 3. And so that's 3 root 2. Uh, if this is 3 root 2, you can do the same thing here to say this is 4 times 2. So it's root 4 times 2, root 4 root 2, root 4 is 2, so that's 2 root 2. Um, apologies for doing that all written down, but I feel like this is one of the ones that you actually just memorise, isn't it? Root 8 is 2 root 2, just write it straight down. And anyway, these two things come together for 5 root 2, and then you just take away the 3, and that'll be the answer. And we can bring that all together for this question here, right? They've talked you through the question nicely. You know all of this is just that, so you can put that straight there. And now to get rid of all this stuff here, we, we rationalise. So we times by this denominator just with a plus in it instead. And uh, and yeah, make sure you do some proper brackets here, expand it out all properly. It's not too easy to do, but root 2 times root 2, or root 2 times 5 root 2, just do the 5 on its own and say root 2 times root 2 is just 2, 5 times 2 is 10. So that'll be your first term. And then this is 3 root 2, this is 30 root 2. Essentially the integers and the roots just leave each other alone for the most part, unless the roots happen to make an integer themselves as we saw in this first one and then 6 times 3 is 18 and then down here the reason this is good is because the cross terms cancel the 3 times 5 root 2 and the 3 times 5 root 2 one of, the, one of them is a plus and one is a minus and so you end up with this some more stuff cancels and you end up with that as your answer so yeah they've given us pascal's triangle the first few rows in question three and they want us to expand this now to expand this you just look for the row that starts or has a second term of a three because there's a three here and then you just use these numbers as the coefficients. So this will be e cubed plus 3e e squared f plus 3ef e squared plus 1f cubed. Um, and so you just juggle the powers as you go along and just use the row where the number, this will be to the power 2, to the power 3, to the power 4, and so on. And you end up with that. And given this, work out this. So we just need a spot here that, well, if you just replace e with 7 and f with 3, I think this is just correct. They've tried to trick you like with this term and they've got a 12 here instead of a 4. But they haven't got the times by 3 that the f should be acting as. And of course, 4 times 3 gives you that 12. So they try to be kind of tricky, but this is just 7 plus 3 all to the power 4. Given this thing here, everything else matches. You can check. They've, they've done another trick with this 28, but it's just 1, 4 times 1 lot of 7 to make that. Anyway, 7 plus 3 is 10, and then 10 to the 4 is um, 10,000. And then expand this. This is just using the same thing as this, except every time we see an e, we're going to put a bracket around it and replace it with a 2e. So it's, I've literally just copied out this line and just every time an e came along, copied down a 2e. And then of course, 2e to the power four is two to the power four, which is 16. 
e to the power of 4. Um, so we end up with this kind of thing here. 2 to the power of th 3 is 8, times by 4 is 32, it's 4, times by 6 is 24, and so on. And you end up with that there. And that's that one done. Uh, this is the fourth root of 81, then cubed. Now you could do those in either order here, but it's almost certainly better to do the fourth root first because that makes the number nice and small. The fourth root of 81 is just three. All of these will just have easy to find integer values if this is a non-calc paper. Three cubed is obviously 27. Here, you could do this in a couple of different ways, but um, just using what we just learned, I decided to say that nine squared is 81. And then of course, 81, or, or I guess you could say, the fourth root of 81 was 3, so that means that 3 to the power 4 is 81, kind of just the opposite skill. And of course, a 1 over just means using a negative power, so that's 3 to the power minus 4. There were lots of other ways you could have got, gone about doing that. Um, here again, just like we saw in, was it question 2, that they're using all the stuff that we've just done to get this question here, because we, we just dealt with 81 to the 3 quarters, it's there, so we'll replace that with a 27. And this thing here, we also just dealt with, we'll replace that with a 3 to the minus 4. Except this 27 that I referenced here, maybe it's better to replace it with 3 cubed, as we saw it was halfway through the working. And the reason that this is good, and by the way, this is the only one that's new, I've replaced the 27 with a 3 cubed, as we did here as well. I'm not using this equals 27 yet. Um, but the reason I've done that here as well is because now, of course, we can just multiply these powers. These 3s cancel to get 3 to the minus 2. And now we've got a bunch of things multiplying together under the same base. So we're just going to add all the powers. So we're going to do minus 2 plus this plus this plus this. And if you do that, you just get this, right? Because there's no y's to go with any of these things. So minus 2 plus 1 minus 4 plus 3 is minus 2. So you end up with this, which apparently needs to equal 27, which, as I've said a couple of times already in this in this question here, 27 is 3 cubed. And now we can just say 2y minus 2 must equal this 3 here. And, uh, and you solve for y, and you end up with 5 over 2 as your answer. Now, a little bit of a proof here. Um, nice that they put this in here it's actually also in regular gcse i guess not that anything that we haven't seen so far isn't also in regular gcse but to do proofs of circle theorems it's all about finding isosceles triangles within your circle um, so if you add this line in that i've added in here um, you can just say well dash here dash here dash here we've got two equilateral triangles uh, sorry two isosceles triangles here this one and this one and if i just call this angle here a um, and maybe this angle here b that means this one is A because it's isosceles, and this one is B because it's isosceles. You should probably write some of these things that I'm saying down when you're doing this in an actual exam. Um, I'm just I'm just too lazy, and I know I'm saying it out loud anyway, so I don't really need to bother. Um, this angle here, of course, this is just a triangle, which again is something you probably want to write down. Um, and so this angle here is 180 minus these two A's, and likewise, this is 180 minus the two B's. And so this angle here, and again, it's probably best to, at this point, say something like angle BOC, and here you could have said AOB, um, but again, it's it's not, uh, I'm saying it all out loud, so I think I'm getting away with it. But this angle here, because of course 360 around a point, is 360 minus this minus this. All the numbers cancel and the negatives also cancel, which just give you 2A plus 2B, which is of course two lots of A plus B. And then just to be super clear at the end, I'm actually going to write it down properly, um, angle BAC is just A plus B. And angle BOC is 2A plus B. So therefore the angle at the centre is, is double the angle of the circumference. And that will be that proof done. Again, writing down some of the actual rules and stuff would be a really good idea. Uh, the point Q is coordinates this on the curve. We're going to move this curve A to the left, I guess that is, uh, and B up. And we're going to get this. Um, so, okay, well, well, it's clearly gone 3 to the right and 4 up. So this is also, I mean, every point is transformed by the same amount, right? So this is also going to go 3 to the right and 4 up. Um, so 3 to the right for minus 2 is, my, is positive 1, and 4 up is uh, 4. So it's going to be at 1, 4. And then AB, well, uh, again, it, it's going 3 right, 4 up. So we're going to add 4 at the end. And remember, this is going to be take away 3 to make it go, to make it go right. Um, just that the function always goes in the opposite direction to what you think it would if it's inside the brackets like this. Uh, this next one is using that same idea, just a bit more complicated. Um, we've got, I, I don't really like this notation too much, but we've got a function g of x, which is being transformed by this factor d, which remember, if you put the d inside the brackets like that, it's a horizontal squash factor d. So if the d was a 2, it would squash into the x axis, sorry, into the y axis by factor 2. And uh, and then you're timesing it by k, so you're stretching it out vertically. So that one doesn't do the opposite of the thing, right? Like if you times that by 2, it actually gets taller. And then you add 1, which is of course just moving it up 1. So we think about how to get from here to here. Only one of these things does anything horizontally, which is the top one. So we need to get from minus 3 to minus 6 just using this top function here. Well, if you're at minus 3 and you then go to minus 6, you're getting further away from the y-axis. You're actually stretching out away from the y-axis. 
So that must be a factor of a half, that D there. Because, like I said, squashing is when you do like a times by two. To stretch it out, you do the opposite. So you divide it by two or times by a half. And then, of course, we've got to stretch it and then move it up one. So if we stretch this by factor three to make it into a six, then add one, that would be perfect. And we get to seven. So the stretch is a factor three. And uh, that's that one done as well. Question seven. This is not a long paper, by the way. I think there's only nine questions. Question seven, center zero, three, circumference four pi. So circumference is two pi r. So four pi equals two pi r. Cancel the pi's and the two, and you get r as two. We may as well draw that, right? Or if we may as well, it tells us to. Center zero minus three radius two. So make it kind of go up to here and down to there and then across to there and so on. Roughly speaking, should be fine. And uh, I'm not sure whether you need a compass for any of that. Um, may as well bring one along with you. Why not? Then the line has equation this, find the coordinates of intersection. So, okay, well, we just need to firstly find the equation of this circle here. Um, of course, the equation is given by this, and uh, where A is the x coordinate of the center and B is the y coordinate. So we're going to put in 0 and minus 3 in for that, and R is the radius, which is 2. We've already worked out. So that simplifies flies down to this. And now I'm going to rearrange that for y. Just move the y over and the 5 over, and you end up with this here. And, uh, and yeah, you can just shove this result in for that y there. So that 2x minus 5 just goes straight into there. Don't square root this, please. Don't don't say this is x plus y plus 3 equals 2. Don't do not do that. People, you know, it hurts. It hurts when you do that. Just just put in this thing into there. You know what y is. It's 2x minus 5. Just put it into here, guys. Just put it into there like this. And then start expanding. Well, start simplifying, I guess, first. And then start expanding some brackets. Again, please don't say this is 2x squared is 4x squared plus four, it, it's double brackets. Come on, double brackets. Then expand the double brackets out. Um, simplify this all up, make it equal zero on this side, uh, which happily just makes you be able to factorize the next out. So the answer is either x equals zero or five x minus eight equals zero. And uh, of course, if x equals zero, we just have that y equals minus five, just reading from this line. And from here, we have x equals eight fifths, um, which is a bit annoying, particularly without a calculator. But two lots of eight fifths is 16 fifths take away 25 fifths, I guess this is, which gives you minus nine fifths. Bit of a Pythagorean triple turning up there. And anyway, so the coordinate is that there, and that will be our two coordinates for that answer. Question eight, interesting that they've put some mechanics, or at least what I would define as mechanics into this. I wonder if there are any statistics in paper two. We're all gonna have to sit here and hope not. The motion of all is given by this thing here. The height is that. What's the initial height? Well, uh, initial height is just when t is zero. So you put t is zero into this. And you get s equals some stuff times by zero, which doesn't matter, plus seven. So the answer is seven. It's not valid when t is five, because of course, what happens when you put t is five in? Well, you work this out, this x ends up being minus 125, which makes the whole thing negative. Um, and so what you're saying then is it's underground, because the height zero is the floor, right? But it, it can't go through the floor. So it just stops working the moment it hits the floor, right? That's just when the quadratic stops modeling this properly. The maximum height, this is an interesting question because I would naturally just tell anyone to differentiate this to find the answer because I think it's by far the quickest way of doing this question. But I don't think, of, I mean, I would have assumed differentiation would have already turned up if it was part of this course. So we're going to make the assumption that it's not part of this course. I probably should have checked beforehand. And, uh, and instead, well, how do we work out maximum and, and minimums uh, of quadratics without differentiation? Well, we just complete the square. Now, completing the square to this is not trivial because of this minus 5. The way that I would do it is ignore the 7. Even if this number was divisible by 5, I would still ignore it and just put it out here. Um, pull the minus 5 out. That means putting a minus here, which is just kind of tricky. But yeah, uh, and then complete the square on this thing here. So halve this minus 4 to make a minus 2. Take away 2 squared. Always take away. Um, when you're doing that completing the square business and then multiply that five back into the two things to make this this minus makes this a plus again and then it finally ends up being this and of course the maximum height is just the number that you read at the end here the reason it's the maximum is because of this minus here whatever you use as t the smallest you can make this is zero right it's either zero or a positive number because of something squaring so therefore um if, well, if this is either zero or positive, that means the whole thing with this minus here is either zero or negative. You want it to be zero to be as high as possible. So you just take the 27. It happens when t is two, which they haven't actually asked us. Um, but anyway, uh, Chris catches the ball when it's two meters above the ground. So that means s is two, right? S is the height above the ground. So s is two. It's actually easiest rather than using this equation here to use the one that we just created because we can solve this super easily for t by taking away 27, by dividing by minus five, by square rooting, and then by adding two. Now, time only goes forwards. We haven't yet invented a way to go back in time. 
So 2 minus root 5, root 5 is bigger than 2 because root 4 is 2. Um, so 2 minus root 5 is a negative number, so this must have the answer or only answer of t equals 2 plus root 5, which is our correct number here. And this last question, a banging 8 marked question here, not something you see in regular GCSE maths. It's a vectors question, and it's a good one as well. I, I Obviously, I'm someone who enjoys vectors questions because who doesn't? Um, there's a lot to do in this question, and it's not, it's not they don't give you very much information, and it's quite hard to figure out exactly what you're doing as you go along. Um, obviously, the first step for one mark is to work out that a to b is minus 2a plus 3b. So that's just, obviously, it's what you should be doing there. C is the point a to c equals 5 thirds a to b. So that means that a to c and a to b are parallel or exist on the same line. I just said that they exist on the same line. In fact, they must exist on the same line because they both um, share a in common. Now, a to c is 5 thirds of a to b, so it's bigger than a to b, right? You take a to b and you times it by a number bigger than 1 to get a to c. So it's bigger than a to b. Um, so it must be down here somewhere. And that vector there is just this times 5 thirds, which eventually gives you this. So that vector there is this whole thing here. So that's a couple of marks got. d is the point such that a to d is this. Now, I don't really have anywhere to draw d, so I'm just going to put it way over here somewhere. Um, because otherwise the picture will be cluttered. A to D, they told me, is XA plus YB. So I'm just going to label that there. And C to D, which I can draw nice and easily away from everything else, is this thing here. Now, where is this going? How on earth do you make progress here? Well, it's that classic strategy with vectors of finding a vector that describes two different, or finding two different journeys that describe the same vector, right? So A to D is clearly, as they've told us, just XA plus YB, but it's also a to c plus c to d. So that's what I've written here. a to d is not just this boring vector here, but it's this minus 10 thirds plus 5b thing plus that thing that they told us there. We can group this in terms of a and b to make that. But like I said, we have this alternate description of a to d, which is this thing right here. And that's the same journey. So it must also just be able to replace that thing in there as well. And we have this. And now for these things to actually be the same, which we know they are because the picture tells us so and because all the algebra told us so, that means that the components of the a vectors and the components of the b vectors must be the same. So this x must be the same as this, and this y must be the same as this, uh, which of course gives us two equations that we can solve for x and y respectively. Um, they're not that difficult to solve. You add two thirds of x and then you cancel the threes and divide by five. And then here, I guess you, you take away 13, 33, so this is 33, 33, this leaves you 20 of them times by 33 divided by 20. I divide by 20 first to get you to a quarter and then you get 33 on top. So we get those two numbers there. So let's replace those in there. Now that's not the whole answer. I've just replaced the X and the Y in there. If you see, there are that. Everything else is the same. That's not the whole answer because they want O to B to B to D in their simplest form. Now O to B is just 3B. What about B to D? Well, B to D we can find by starting at B, we go backwards along this vector. Remember that was the shorter vector that you got from here to here. So go backwards along there, which means flipping these signs. So it's 2a minus 3b. And then just add in this business there that we worked out just now. Um, so that's b to d. So we go backwards along this one. So change the signs. That's there. And then just add this one in. The a's cancel, which is nice. You get this. And now, of course, we notice why this is so nice. O to b is just 3b. So it's just 3b ratioed with 21 over 4b. Uh, the, obviously, the, the b vector just cancels. You're just left with this number here. Times by 4 divided by three, I guess, or divide by three first is what I did apparently. I think you could argue that this is correct, but most people would times by four and leave it like that. Anyway, I thought that was a really nice paper. Um, very good for someone aiming for eights and nines because it was virtually, I don't think there was a single, aside from maybe the Spectres business, I don't think there was a single non-GCSE piece of maths. And they have actually even asked this 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 question here in GCSE before, this kind of thing. I'm um, just not worth this many marks in one go. Um, so yeah, anyone aiming for an 8 or 9, do try these papers when they come out because it's just all, uh, unless I'm mistaken, yeah, maybe this mechanic's a bit unfamiliar. But aside from that, everything in here was just good GCSE maths questions, um, maybe asked in a slightly different and slightly more interesting way, like this proof, rather than just doing a question with the numbers. So yeah, something that's well worth people doing if you're aiming for an 8 or 9. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.